What's going on, everyone? This is Jordan with Conquer Trading and Investing, and this is our weekly Forex forecast and analysis for the upcoming week of March the 30th through April the 3rd. All right, everyone, this is obviously going to be a very important forecast because a lot of moving pieces are coming to an important inflection point. Let's start over here with the DXY. This is probably where a lot of interest is, and it's actually dividing a lot of traders and a lot of investors about what the next moves might be. Now, here's a couple of things. The first thing I want you to see as we're looking at price right now, trading at 9831 that if you just follow my mouse over here, okay, it's basically where we were in the end of, or the beginning of February, all right? Now, you see this large move down and large move up, and we're kind of right in the middle, all right? Now, 98.30, on the greater scheme of things, is still a strong dollar. Now, has the Fed been able to step in here and halt the dollar shortage? Has it been able to, to free up these liquidity lines? Yes, probably so. Doing so is probably gonna cause a greater need for US dollars, and then we're gonna get into the equity markets in a minute. Now, currently looking at the charts here, obviously the dollar is under some pressure after peaking over here at 103. We've seen it come back down. This is, I think, since, well, in quite a while, the largest drop in the value of the dollar in, in a long time. Uh, now we're down here at 98.31. Uh, we're near some, some near-term support. Uh, I think there's strong support down a little bit below. I think this area down here around between 98.30 and 97.90 is definitely a little bit stronger of an area to look for. Now, I, I do personally remain a dollar bull, and I really think that uh, all, these, all these swap lines opened up to different central banks. They're, they're basically borrowing dollars for the short term. They have to pay them back. The, the, the demand for dollars, I think, is going to come back. Uh, we were expecting the possibility over here of not only the stimulus bill, as well as the, the action by the Federal Reserve to weigh on the dollar near term. But guess what? Other countries and other central banks are also going to be doing the same. Let's find out what happens. Uh, let's get into the charts on specific pairs. But before we do that, let me today start off with, with uh, the S&P 500. Now, here's a look at the S&P 500. It's been extremely volatile, ups and downs. We, we, we gained 20% off the lows over here in just a few days. It's really volatile. The only other time that type of price action has taken place has been during, um, during the Great Depression era. Now, in bear markets, up moves are violent. Is this the lows that we're possibly going to see, or are we going to go ahead and uh, retest them or possibly trade lower? Uh, lower? I'm in the, in the latter camp. I do believe we're going to come down and test these lows. I do believe that it's possible that we even trade lower. Now, what happens in the near term, we're going to have to wait to see what happens on Monday. Because why? Well, the stimulus bill... Uh, was passed into law and signed into law by President Trump on Friday, and you saw a massive sell-off into the close on Friday on the S&P. Now, the reason why is that the Fed said that they're going to reduce their QE to $60 billion from $80 billion a day. All right, so already the Fed is unwinding that or, or limiting that unlimited QE. And I think the market didn't like that. I think we see it selling down initially. If we get some follow through, if this resistance over here at 2506, the support, sorry, is taken out, and you could see that we might gap below it on the opening, it's totally possible. But if 2506, uh, 2502 in that area is taken out, and then we come down, and this support down here, support at, call it 2400, it's 2395. If that doesn't hold, then for sure we're going to come down and test these lows and maybe take them out. All right. Uh, as far as the upside, I think that you got some really heavy resistance. The targets that I was initially looking at uh, was 28 and 29.20. Uh, and then you have this yellow uh, sloping uh, uh, resistance line to look at. So uh, I, don't, I don't think we're going to get up here just yet. I do think we're going to be testing down further early on Monday. But if we do not only t turn around over here, but take out the highs of Friday, then there's a good chance that we trade all the way up at least to 2,800, possibly 2,920. 
All right, moving on to the euro, US dollar. Look at this candle. This is a beast of a candle. I'm looking at the eight hour. Let me switch over to the daily time frame with you. Look at these candles we've seen. Look at this powerful, powerful up move. Have we come too far too fast? Well, that remains to be seen. We're gonna see what happens. I noticed, I pointed out to you on the DXY, a little bit support, a little bit further down. You could see the resistance area a little further up on the euro US dollar. Uh, if you know, it remains to be seen how we open up. That's why I want you all to check in with me Monday morning after we get Asia and London out of the way and we get some further clarity of where the markets are taking things. Do subscribe to the channel. If you're able to follow the live streams, do so. Otherwise, go ahead and watch that replay. But you could see that as we come up here into this resistance, I think that's where we're gonna peak out if we do get up there. I'm not so sure which way we open. This heavy line over here, this heavy resistance line I have at point, I'm sorry, 1.0995. Trade, start trading back below that, and I think the dollar is gonna regain some of its strength. Right now, we are definitely here. Uh, we've seen the powerful action in the euro. We've seen the gains it's made over the lows over here at 1.6631, all the way up here really quick. There's been a lot of momentum. You see over here, you see on this one candle, all the stops were taken out over here, and then all the, since then, it's been reversed to the upside. Um, you know, things don't go straight up or straight down forever, and all week we've been going straight up. Now, there is the possibility, there is the possibility that during the G20 meeting, there was some type of arrangement. I'm not talking about a Plaza Accord 2.0, where everyone gets together with the sole purpose of weakening in the dollar, as we saw during the Plaza Accord, but there could have been some works, there could have been some things going on behind the scenes, because ever since then, we've seen the dollar just come off pretty hard. That could have to do with the stimulus bill. Let's see what happens on Monday. Uh, to be honest, you know, I'm, I'm leaning toward a stronger dollar. I'm leaning towards a stronger dollar. Moving over to the US dollar, Japanese yen, you could see that FX has been in beast mode with large volatile moves. This move down from 112 down to 100 was enormous. Who would have thought that just a week later we would have been trading back up to one, almost testing that high back up at 112, and now all of a sudden we're 500 pips down. Uh, so what's going on here? Well, again, there's been a lot of movement, a lot of volatility, and we're kind of back into the range that we were all of November through February. All right, at the lower end of it, that's for sure. Japanese yen was on fire on Friday, but however, the next day on Saturday, we did uh, hear some, some uh, a press conference held out of, out of Japan. Abe did say that things are about to turn dire over there, uh, not looking good. Again, there was, there's, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of noise, and by noise, what I mean these sharp moves that are really volatile, really choppy. Traders got hurt on both sides, I'm sure. Also, a lot of money has been made over these last couple of weeks. Uh, now, what happens and where are we now? But we're gonna get some really good clarity this coming week. I, I'm certain of that, that we're gonna get some good clarity. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people are uh, really, really bearish on the US dollar right now. There's also a lot of smart money that's really bullish on it, all right? I think I'm gonna go ahead and put together some good information outlining uh, both sides, you know, those who are bearish on the dollar, those who are bullish, reasons why I remain bullish on the US dollar. Uh, now, I said that if we, if we traded below 108.35, all right, that I would turn bearish. Well, and that might be the case. I'm, I might start getting um, a little bullish here on the end, but I need to see how the market opens after the news on today, Saturday, out, out of Japan, as well as I need to see what the US dollar, how it reacts come Monday. All right, traders are taking the weekend to digest a lot of information. From what I'm seeing, the LIBOR rate is rising. I'm seeing dollar shortages a lot in a lot of places. I think that this week's moves to weaken the dollar here is going to exasperate, is going to, to cause the, 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 uh, the, the need for dollars to be even greater than it's been. So uh, I'm not yet turning here bearish on the US dollar, specifically versus the Japanese yen. I'm gonna wait till Monday, see how the open is, and then get a better read on, on which direction that I'm gonna be looking to trade around. 
Here's a look at Bitcoin. This is BTC US dollar and Bitcoin right now is trading around 6,200. Now, I think we're looking for a possible low somewhere around 57, 5,800. If we could get if we could get over this weekend a move down into that area, that's a place that I'll be looking to lean into. Now, the one thing we need to watch out for here on Bitcoin is if, uh, you know, when we saw that liquidity crisis, when we saw the, the move down here, you know, to 3,800, it basically every asset in the world was highly and tightly correlated because there was just a simple lack of liquidity. Since then, what we've seen is the Federal Reserve come in with an enormous amount of liquidity, open up lines. It remains this, I think they acted appropriately for what the situation was. Uh, things would have been much worse. We would have been headed toward a quicker depression otherwise. And it remains to be seen if everything they've done to go ahead and get in front of this situation is enough. And there's a good chance probably it is uh, in, in the short term. And this is the situation that Bitcoin was, cr was created for. The bankers' bailouts, the printing of money, the scarce asset is the solution. This is why Bitcoin was created. Uh, and this is its environment to shine. Yes, just like gold, it took a little bit of a beating. But it's since recovered pretty well, and it's stabilizing here. Uh, I think the next couple of months are going to be really interesting to see what Bitcoin could do. Don't forget, all that money that's being printed has to go somewhere. It really has to go somewhere. And scarce assets are going to become more and more valuable than ever. I remain uber bullish on Bitcoin, more, more bullish than I've ever been in my life. I think that this is an opportunity down here to start, uh, if, if you're not already... If you're not already positioned into Bitcoin, to first of all, go ahead and do that. Second of all, it's a, it's a really good place to dollar cost average in, and I will continue to do so. Even if we were to come out and take out this low of 3,800, I will look at it as an opportunity to make sure that I'm there to step in. As I was able to during this drop, I was able to take, uh, you know, pick up uh, 4,200, uh, somewhere around 5,000, and it's 61. And if we drop back lower, I would be happy to pick up more Bitcoin. Uh, as far as trading it, not yet. As I've always said, it's going to be a few months from now once we hit the bull market phase. Let's take a look and check in with WTI crude oil here. Crude trading down all the way to 2180. Not joking, as we were up here in the live streams uh, on multiple occasions trading, uh, I don't know if it was in the high 50s, low 60s, we did talk about the fact that we were looking at a global recession. Uh, we were talking about oil uh, trading down, you know, in the neighborhood of $26. Here we are at $21. I never expected things to happen or unfold this quickly. Uh, and and my, obviously, my view on oil has changed. I do think we're going lower. I think we're going lower. The U.S. is trying to reach out to Saudi Arabia. They're trying to get Saudi Arabia to come in here and help out as because the U.S. shale suppliers are getting hurt. Uh, but Saudi Arabia basically said, listen, Russia's got to be on board. Otherwise, it's just futile for us to do anything. Russia is not on board to do that. They are absolutely uh, inflicting a pain on the U.S. at the right time. Don't forget, it was the U.S. who kind of started this by first sanctioning Russia. What do you expect Russia to do? Right. So here we are. And to be honest, it looks like that, you know, we're, there's, th we could break down over here. And if we break down over here, we could trade much lower. We could trade down about another 20, 25%. I think 1450 is the area to look for. The demand is not there. The demand is not there. We have, you know, uh, the world is on lockdown. We have not yet peaked here. Uh, look for continued pressure here on, on crude. Any bounce, any bounce uh, has already been sold. Here is the bounce. It was sold pretty quickly. I'm not... I'm not so sure we're going to get another bounce. I think we're going to break down over here next week. Let's follow it. Pound US dollar. Look at this chart. Look at this chart. Look at this volatility. Take a step back with me. All right. I want you to see that price is coming up into this area. Let me highlight this for you right here, this area of resistance. Now, uh, you know, the, the, what a move we've seen. We've seen uh, price trade up 1,000 pips this week. What a move on the pound. Listen, the UK is in trouble. Things are not looking good there. Uh, this was an overreaction to the downside. 
and then we've seen a reaction to the upside. We're coming into an area of resistance. I pointed out on the DXY how it's getting close to an area of support. It's getting really close. Here's the equal area of resistance on the pound US dollar. I think this is a beautiful place to lean in over here because you're able to really take a really nice trade here. You know where you're wrong, trade back above this resistance and you could get out of the trade. But the potential on the downside looks to me to come down here and possibly test this area over here around 1.2. So this trade over here looks like uh, with volatility like this, the potential to make some really good money is definitely there. All right, let's take a look over here at gold. We're looking at XAU US dollar, and everyone knows that I'm quite the gold bug, that I'm a firm believer in gold. And not only that, that I believe everyone should make it a, a, a portion of their portfolio, physical that is. Now, right here, I have to be honest, I am pretty bearish on gold. I think what's gonna, this is exactly as, as we spoke about, that we thought that gold was gonna come back up into this region over here. But it's having a little bit of trouble over here getting above 1650. And I know this is a good environment for gold. I know that all this stimulus here ultimately is going to be what benefits gold. But I don't think so yet. I think what we're going to see right now, I do think that we're going to see the, the uh, liquidity problem come back into the forefront of the U.S. dollar. I think it's going to continue to put a little bit of pressure on gold. Uh, I am aware that it could also do that to Bitcoin. Um, although I'm leaning more bullish on Bitcoin than I am on gold. If we get back above this yellow line over here, 1650, uh, right away I will be definitely leaning towards the bullish side on gold. But until we're able to get above that resistance, I, I'm, I'm right now leaning bearish towards gold. As far as where we might come back into, I think around the 1554 uh, level would be a really nice area for me to begin seeing how price reacts around there, seeing if that's a place that I would like to lean on to. If we break below there, I'll do a different update because everything will have changed. Let me go ahead and draw that line over there. Let me put that line of support. I think we consolidate right now between the two from where we are right now until we cross to the upside over here. Now, if you see down over here, you could see that gold has gone ahead and put up uh, from 1450 back up to 1650, $200 in just about a week. And you can see here that it's been straight up. We haven't, we, but did, I'm sorry, we did make a lower low right over here on Thursday. And now we're back up. I think that this is a place where, um, you know, I don't know if gold is the, is, is the instrument that you want to short. I think this is the place to took profits. I know that I did on Friday. I saw that gold was getting a little bit hung up. I took off my, my uh, the positions that I added to down here. I took them off. If we get back above this area over here, I will again be looking trade to the bullish side because I would not be surprised at any point in time if we take out 1700 and head towards 1900 at all. But I do think right now that we're gonna get caught up over here. I think there's a possibility that we trade back down, this resistance holds, and then we come over here and consolidate and firm up. I would love to trade back down to 1550. This is an area of pretty good resistance here. Was good support over here. Although we traded below it, we got back back, back above it really quick. Uh, I'll be watching for two things. I'll be watching for price to consolidate right along here, right around this area over here, all right? Or for us to fade back down and then consolidate over here. Uh, so next week, I, I think this is a week to, to probably take profits, stand aside, unless we get it back, back above 1650. Uh, but next week, if we do get some type of consolidation, either towards the upper part of this range or the lower part of this range, it might be opening up an opportunity for us to get into gold again as a tradable action. All right, now I'm not going to get into the Australian dollar Swiss franc and the New Zealand dollar Swiss franc because I went ahead on Thursday and I published on TradingView. You could check out uh, in the description of this video my TradingView profile. You could find the Australian dollar Swiss franc. You could find the Australian dollar, I mean the New Zealand dollar Swiss franc. And the overviews provided there are, ex are ex irrelevant exactly today as they are then. Uh, the same trades are in effect. I'm looking for them actually to be definitely be one of my top entries going into next week. So do go ahead and check out both of those, the Australian dollar Swiss franc and New Zealand dollar Swiss franc. You'll find a couple of other good setups there as well, excluding the outlook on Bitcoin that I do recommend. It's about a four minute overlook on Bitcoin. It's a little bit more thorough than normal for a trading view setup, but you'll see where I'm, what I'm looking at on Bitcoin and why.
Now, I do want to look at the Australian dollar Japanese yen with you, though, and you'll notice that the yen has been quite strong uh, the past couple of days. And the Australian dollar has as well. And look over here. We can see that we're kind of consolidating between this area over here I have down at 64.85 and the big resistance area of 67.44. Uh, as we're coming into this resistance here, if we start making lower lows, I sell resistance and downtrends. This is a big downtrend here on the Australian dollar Japanese yen. We have come up uh, about 600, 700 pips off the bottom over here. And we're now into this area of resistance. This is an area I'm looking to hold and to sell. Listen, if you think that we're gonna see further risk off in the weeks ahead, headlines are about to get really bad. The market's gonna realize or, or test the Fed to see that hey, listen, what you did wasn't enough, we need more. I have a feeling the way that I'm playing it is things are actually gonna to start to get much worse now. You could see in China, we're seeing actually a second wave of infections starting to occur, even though they're call, blaming it on foreigners entering the country, they've now closed off their borders. This weekend, Russia closed off its borders to everyone, no incoming or departing flights whatsoever in and out of the country. Uh, I do think that this whole situation is going to see a further escalation and the earliest we're possibly going to see uh, this peaking could be sometime uh, around the end of April. So there's a lot of time ahead of us, uh, a lot of time between now and then. Um, if this resistance holds, uh, now is the time for me to load up and get short here on the Australian dollar, Japanese yen. Conquer in the markets continues to grow. We're up to 3,800 subscribers, about to hit 4,000. One of the fastest growing channels in the foreign exchange markets. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so now. If you're not yet following our daily live streams, every Monday, Monday through Friday, we live stream to give you that overview of the market. Find out what's how the markets are set up, as well as how greater macro trends are developing. Do go ahead and join this extremely tight community that we have. Listen, Bitcoin has been hurt. Bitcoin remains the same exact bullish case that I have laid out for you in this video. If you've not watched this video, go ahead and do it. If you're not yet profitable, go ahead and watch this video, this simple and profitable trading strategy, and start here. You will be profitable. This strategy has been cleaning up in 2020 because of the volatility. Look, I really look forward to, tra to trading with you, to working forward with you. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so. Everyone, be safe, and I'll talk to you soon.